Hello and welcome. I'm Sudeshna Banerjee, Managing Editor for CFO Collective. Organizations use data analytics as a pillar for empowering growth and meeting goals. To excel and to save costs, we always adopt new technologies which come with their own share of challenges and opportunities. To understand this more, let's go across to Jadip Dutta, Director of Finance, Publicis Sapiens. Welcome, Mr. Dutta, and thank you for sparing time to talk to us. Thank you, Sudeshna. First up, analytics is part and parcel of every business today. Take us through the new trends and opportunities. So let me give you the example of the of the father. See, this is common knowledge. This was published more than a decade ago. And uh, this is the father of a teenage daughter in suburban Minneapolis in US. And he was going through the mails of his teenage daughter and he found that um, one of the stores was sending was sending his daughters uh, coupons for baby uh, clothes and cribs and a whole lot of other baby you know um, equipment. So he went to the nearby store which sent him that and then later on he found out he wasn't really aware of it but he found out that his daughter was on the family way. So this is based on a, what the, 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 what I'm telling you is based on an article which was written in 2012 by Charles Duhigg. You know, the same person who wrote the bestseller Power of Habit, the same person. He wrote an article in 2012 in the New York Times, which gave details about this whole episode. And he said, and this was about Target, the, you know, the, the famous U.S. retailer. And he met, he explained since Charles is also a kind of a statistician. He explained how uh, companies are able to do these kind of targeted advertising. So Target, for example, they have these uh, customers. They know the purchase history of every individual right? uh, through their card, uh, either the Target branded cards or you know the, the names of, the, of their customers. And they have access to the baby shower registries. So they're able to fairly and ac- pretty accurately estimate the the day of birth of the baby, right? They back calculate. And then they found out, you know, that in the first 20 weeks, expecting mothers tend to purchase a lot of vitamin lotions and, uh, and mineral supplements, right? And in the first, in the second trimester, they purchase a lot of unscented lotions and cotton balls. Why unscented? because expecting mothers don't want to use harmful chemicals. And cotton, the cotton balls I'm referring to the ones, you know, the small cotton balls, which, which you used to, you know, take a pull out makeup. So then what, what Target does is, what they were doing at that point in time, they were then putting this into a statistical model and then churning the data. And they, they could estimate to an extent, about they had a 98% uh, accuracy rate of knowing whether the person was on the family way or not. And then they would then send, you know, uh, special, special coupons for, you know, baby equipment, um, just the kind of stuff that the expecting mother would want to buy. Now, now one of the learnings that Target which, which happened to target after this, after you know, after the father and the teenage daughter episode, was that uh, after that episode, they would not be just sending these coupons. They would mix it up with other coupons. So they would send you also coupons for wine glasses, lawnmowers, cleaning equipment, and all of that. So, so that the prospective customer doesn't feel that he is being snoop, he or she is not being snooped upon. So that's you know just. One example of how well companies are able to know your habits. Again, um, you must have also, you know, you know, when you when you look at say Netflix or Amazon, you you get these, uh, 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 you know, the little things at the bottom where if you bought something, you'll get something similar. So that process is called, you know, that's called col- they use a technique called collaborative filtering. You know, where what happens is you filter choices based or rather the the companies like Amazon, for example, they would filter choices based on the collective intelligence of other people's product choices. What challenges do you face when you try to convert data 
into insights and decisions. I won't talk too much about marketing analytics because as CFOs, uh, marketing analytics is quite a quite a specialized and advanced field and that has been going on for the last say 20 years. What has really been, uh, what has really changed as CFOs, as finance professionals for us is has been in the last, has happened in the last 20, say the last decade or so, the last 10 years, right? As companies, the only way you can, you know, you can reduce costs is to become more efficient. And in order to be efficient, you have to use analytics. And that's where finance analytics in finance comes in. And, you know, you have this all this data which comes out of your financial systems and all the data that are allied to the financial systems. And then you can use all the kind of analytics that you want on that. Now, one of the biggest, uh, I would say, uh, improvements that have happened, one of the big changes that have happened in the last six, seven years is that it's been able to create data scientists out of people, or rather citizen data scientists out of ordinary people like us. You know, we people as, you know, who've been trained as accountants can easily become citizen data scientists with the tools that we have today. So now, nowadays you have tools like Power BI, Tableau, Click, or even SAP have their own, uh, you know, they have their own intelligence tool like SAP Analytic Cloud, Oracle have their own intelligence tool like uh, business intelligence tool, OBIEE, right? But out of all of these, some of them, you know, you, you don't really don't even need people from the IT domain to be able to help you. You can learn it and you can do it yourself. New technologies often have their share of challenges and data privacy and security issues. How do organizations deal with it? How do organizations deal with compliance issues? Um, I'll be very frank with you. Um, my advice and which I, which we follow over here is to leave it to the experts. We as finance people are not experts in this. So if you can't hire people, then go outside and take assistance from them, uh, from, from experts. But don't try doing everything yourself. Leave it to the experts. Right. To interpret real-time data, we need more than machines. People who can decipher signals and work with analytics at an expert level. Do you feel there's a gap between supply and demand for professionals? Yeah, absolutely. There's and but then let me take uh, take the first part of your question. You know about being able to interpret data. Now you, you must have read the book, you know, by and by Nassim Taleb on you know the the um, the one on black swan. You know the the way he explains the whole concept of, of the black swan. Now I'm not sure if you're able to see my screen, but you know if let's say you he gives the example of a turkey, right? And if you draw a graph where you know happiness is on the why this is happiness over here and time is here right this is time and so if, you know, the example that he gives is from the, the butcher starts feeding the turkey from january onwards right so the turkey is happiness keeps increasing and come thanksgiving right the happiness keeps increasing. The tur the tur from January onwards, the turkey tends to think that the human race is, ve is very kind and become the that turkey becomes happier and happier. And then all of a sudden on Thanksgiving, this is what happens. That happiness comes down to zero, right? So if you were to do a proper analytical model and you get a graph like this, then with all the regression, the power that you have, if, if you were to in, you know, interpret it, your graph could go like this or could really go like this, right? The, worst, the best case scenario, the worst case scenario, it would never, you would never imagine that it could go down like this, right? You always have to use your brain in order to be able to make sure that the interpretation that you're drawing from the data is really uh, the right one. 
or it makes sense now coming back to the second part of the question whether there will always be a, a shortage of professionals yes there will always be a shortage having said that in finance what we can do you know you we even like in and links it's something like uh, the the ai engine that comes in your power bi you have it on your laptop it's free for you right if you have an if you have a subscription to office 365 which um, 99% of people have today then you can use a power bi desktop and you can use the ai engine within that it's a very simple ai but still it's it's much better much much better than what human intelligence will tell you so you can draw inferences from your data using that engine and that can be done by citizen scientists like us as a finance leader how do you use people analytics to manage your team how do you effectively communicate with your stakeholders at various levels in our business our kind of business um the attrition rate in 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 india in the industry has been depending upon whom you talk to Uh, the attrition rate has been somewhere between 30 and 50%. So using people analytics is extremely important. However, I haven't really come across anyone who's done a very good model about on on this whole topic, you know. Um in our company we do have we are we have built some models. Uh, they are not they are not very great, but the way I see it, you know, if a model can give you a prediction which is better than the flip of a coin then it's at least it's a model worth looking into right it's a model worth looking into and it's a model worth going with and developing further and we have a couple of those already over there with us over here and we are looking into them and we have been kind of implementing them we have been using them and then using them to talk to our people to make sure that our attrition comes down which it has which it has but I'm not very sure whether it's a it's a function of the model or the function of the marketplace that only time will tell. Thank you. With that we come to an end of this session. It was wonderful having you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you Sudeshna.